stalls are, in a very basic definition, a loss of lift. A stall can happen at any airspeed. It's not like you're 100% assured just because you've got 65 knots on the airspeed indicator that the aircraft's not going to stall because we know that it can. Stall speed's a great place to start, but it's really not the complete picture. Stall speed changes with weight. Stall speed changes with our center of gravity. Stall speed changes with our bank angle. The worst place that you can stall is low and slow. That base to final turn is where you're the lowest and where you're the slowest. And with an uncoordinated turn, have the airplane roll on its back and there's usually very little time to recover. It turns out that airspeed is not the important reference for how a wing is flying. In fact, a wing doesn't even think in terms of airspeed. A wing thinks in terms of something called an angle of attack. It's ubiquitous in the military. I mean, everybody's flying an angle of attack. AOA is angle of attack. It's the angle between the wing and the relative wind. So as you increase demand on the aircraft by pulling back on the stick, you're gonna increase your AOA. As a combat fighter pilot, AOA is a vital instrument for us. When I fly AOA, I don't have to consider my fuel weight, my munitions, my configuration. And all of these things go away as soon as I look at angle of attack because it's a direct measurement, not an approximation like airspeed is. It's a direct measurement of my approach to stalling. Historically, angle of attack was just found in military and fighter jets because it's a very expensive thing to measure and to display. But with modern technologies and computer algorithms, we have the ability to bring that system into a small aircraft and display angle of attack in a very intuitive manner. I think angle of attack, well executed, is game changing in any airplane. And it's long overdue. Core to ICON Aircraft's mission is challenging the general aviation industry's norms and paradigms to improve safety. Cockpits are unnecessarily complex. The more time I spend looking inside the cockpit, trying to push buttons and work with things, and my brain is somewhere else, the more likely I am to misfly the airplane. And so what we want to do at ICON is to get rid of the things you don't need, give you the things you do need. And what we've done is develop a very intuitive display system. Angle of attack has never been presented to pilots in clear terms. We intended to change that. The fundamental question about angle of attack is that we knew we needed it. The next question is, how do you execute it? This is the wing. And angle of attack is the orientation of the wing to the relative wind. It's that angle. There's a green, a yellow, and a red sector. Wing's in the green, the wing is happy. Wings in the yellow, it's working very hard in here. The wings in the red, the wing stalls. So all you have to do is fly the airplane and keep the wing in the green or in the yellow and you're fine. Once ICON's design and engineering teams had arrived at a highly intuitive design for the A5's angle of attack indicator, the flight testing team set to work evaluating the gauge's performance during landings on land and water. We're determining the AOA on final that you can fly easily so that when you arrive into the touchdown zone in the flare envelope that they touch down in that perfect attitude. The idea is to make it very easy to both fly a nice stable approach and to get a very nice touchdown and we can correlate what we're seeing in the cockpit from what the airplane is actually doing. If you look at the angle of attack gauge, no matter what weight you are, no matter what the conditions are out, if you put yourself in the middle of the approach range as it's designed on this gauge, you'll handle the wind, you'll handle the weight. When we started using that gauge, we used it solely, the final approach to landing. If you fly the white line, you will nail your water touchdowns every time. On angle of white line. On angle of white line. And transitioning point power back. Touchdown yellow line. The hole responds very nicely. There are times for safety reasons when you need to max perform the airplane. And it's great to know I can look at something, having flown with it, I get constantly reinforced through the interface what the airplane can do, because I got a direct indication all the time. You can turn and turn very hard and know that you can pull the stick and pull right up close to a stall and max perform the airplane. Relying primarily on the AOA gauge, the pilot is able to consistently max perform the A5 while safely avoiding entering an accelerated stall. Three, two, one, turn. We 
thought going in that AOA was the right thing. I'll tell you, after having flown it, I have become even more convinced that it is absolutely the right thing. This one project on AOA is really representative of all of what ICON's about. And this testing convinced me that we've done a very good thing here. The most fun you can have, I think, in any sport, and flying is a sport, is when the tool you're using is out of mind. You're just flying. The tool is translucent. It's seamless. You're not even thinking about it. You're just doing the flying. Our mission is to make the airplane, it's just so easy to fly, so instinctive, so intuitive, that you're just free to have the most fun possible. If airplanes had all been built with angle of attack as just one of the instruments that's always been there, we would be teaching and flying so differently. Being able to fly the wing itself, which is what the AOA does, is a tremendous benefit and I'd like to see more and more general aviation airplanes incorporate that. There's a cost barrier. Can I afford the vehicle? We're working on that. There's a time. Can I afford the time to learn to fly? We're working on that. Is it something I think I can do and do safely? AOA is without question the answer. Thank you.